what we are going to see now is we are going to look at a variety of data compression techniques that can be applied on column store databases. We are going to look at a lot of compression techniques and these techniques you might have learnt in other subjects uh, as well. But uh, let us refresh ourselves on all these techniques. So we'll start with this uh, famous encoding technique, a run length encoding. I hope you all know what is the data compression. Say you actually require, for instance, say you require 100 bytes to store a piece of data. You can apply a compression algorithm on the data and then that piece of data can be stored using 50 bytes. So the same piece of data can be compressed using an algorithm and can be stored within 50 bytes. So you, you have to decode, you have to decode the data to get the original data back. So that will be of 100 bytes. So this is actually used for reducing the space with respect to uh, storage. So we'll start with this famous uh, technique called run length encoding. What is run length encoding? Run length encoding is suitable for a column wherein the data values repeat consecutively. And you can also have the entire table sorted by the values in the column. Let us understand this with an example. So let us consider this example and uh, let's take a look at this particular column and you see here CSC is repeated consecutively in this table and we are just repeating this value again and again in this column and we can compress it and the compression layout is given in this particular table. So how we compress this is first we give the value that we are going to compress. So CSC is the value and one denotes the position in this column where that value starts. So this is position one, this is position two, three, four, five, six. So you give the position where this particular value starts in the column and then six represents number of times the value repeats in the column. So by this, what we are doing is we are saving a lot of space that we require to store CAC repeatedly in the column. So when you have column wise storage, you can very well apply this kind of a compression on the column. Is that clear? So now let us again go and compress another column. Say we have the marks column. And when, ta when you take a look at the marks column, you have value 50 repeating consecutively. So you can also apply run length encoding on the marks column. So you can achieve this uh, compression. 10, it starts in position 1 and it's repeating how many times? Only one time. So you can give this as the compressed format for 10. And 50, how can you compress 50? 50 is the value where it starts. It starts in position 2 in the column and how many times it repeats? 4 times. So when you talk about 100, 100, how it's getting compressed? 100 is the value. It's in what position? It's in the sixth position in the column. So you starts at sixth and how many times it repeats? It repeats once. So when you go and take a look at the table after it's run length encoded, you can see this is the column run length encoded and also the marks column has been run length encoded. So is that clear? How we go and compress data? By compressing data, what we achieve is we achieve a storage of space so this might be very simple you know we have just six rows here so we may think okay why should we even do this consider wherein you repeat CSE 1 million times in a very large table consider that uh, 50 uh, repeats uh, 1 million times so in that case we can just compress the data by giving one simple statement it's just 50 it starts in position 2 and then you say it repeats for 1 million times so we are going to save a lot of space when we are talking about compression. Compression is very effective and it's very effective with respect to columnar databases. And another very important advantage of compression is we can also directly work on the compressed data. So how we can work on this compressed data? For instance, I want to find the sum of all the marks in the marks column. So how can I find the sum of all the marks? I can take the compressed data. 
I know 10, 10 repeats how many times? One time. So it's 10 into 1 plus 50 repeats how many times? It's 50 into 4 plus 100 into 1. So this gives me 310. So I'm able to just retrieve the compressed data and then directly work on the compressed data. Here what I'm doing is I'm not even decoding the data. I'm just working on the encoded data just like that. So this really makes the aggregation very fast. You can just imagine, you know, running an aggregation, a query on 1 million rows, whereas compared to using three rows and then finding the aggregation. So these are the some of the advantages of uh, columnar databases and compression on columnar databases. So now let us go and look at another form of encoding, the bitmap encoding. So this is again useful in columns wherein the data repeats, but the data may not uh, be consecutive and the data may not be sorted. For instance, you can have uh, uh, four fives and then twos and then threes. So you don't have the sorting of the data, but then there is a repetition of the data values. So you can very well go and apply bitmap encoding for encoding such kinds of repetitive data. So let's take this example that we have already seen in the previous uh, slides. So this data, we'll try encoding that using bitmap encoding. So let's consider this particular column, department column, and we'll encode this. So the steps are, we start with the value that we are going to encode. So it is CSE. And for each location where it is present, we'll denote that by a one. For instance, CSE is present here. So we give a one present here so one 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 so in our columns wherever CSE is present we are going to denote that with a one so if CSE is absent in one of the places we will denote that with a zero so since we have CSE in all the locations how we are going to give that is we will say one 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 so this is how we encode CSE it says the value CSE is present in six locations in this particular column. Let's start and let's try encoding the marks column. How we encode the marks column? Let's start with value 10. Value 10 is present in which position? It's present here, so it's 1. Whereas in all the other locations in the column, 10 is absent, so we're going to give zeros. So how you encode 10 which is going to give the value of 10 so it's in position 1 whereas in all the other positions it's encoded as zeros. Now let's go and encode 50. How will you encode 50? Let me erase all the ink on this slide. So how will you encode 50? So we have 50 present here in this position, in this position, in this position, whereas 50 is absent here and 50 is absent here. So how will you denote 50 in bitmap encoding? It's 50 comma 0 1 1 1 1 0. Okay. How will you represent 100 under bitmap encoding? 100 is present here, whereas it is 0 in all the other locations. So for 100, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So how will you represent 100? It's 100. It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So I've also given all these uh, values here. So this is called bitmap encoding. So how it is useful, you know, instead of repeating CSE so many times and just using a one or a zero to represent the presence or absence of uh, CSE. And likewise, we are uh, reducing the number of bits that are required to store our numbers to by just representing the presence or absence using a zero or a one. Is that clear? It's very simple and uh, straightforward. So again, when you take a look at this, uh, say we have 10000 and uh, 0111. So we have some repeating zeros here and we have some repeating ones here. Again, we have some repeating zeros here. So can we compress even this? Yes, we can do that. 
we have to apply run length encoding to actually compress even this data. Since each bitmap is fast, it is run length encoded to save space. So we'll go and see how we can apply run length encoding on bitmap encoding to further save space. So applying further compression, let's take this particular value CSE and how we are going to run length encode this particular value. So we mentioned CSE and when we take this, we see one starts in position one and repeats for how many times? Six times. So you give one comma one comma six. Instead of representing one six times, we are compressing this part using run length encoding. So that is the final version. Can we go and try run length encoding all these values that we have achieved in the previous slide? Can we try that? So for 10, we'll give it as 10 comma and uh, one, one starts in which position? It's in one and it uh, repeats how many times? Just once. And then we start with zero. Zero is in which position? Zero is in position two and it repeats how many times? One, two, three, four, five. So we have five times. So we have actually applied run length encoding on bitmap encoding to further compress this data. As I told you, when this data is very large, you need to compress even that. Can we try for this one? How can we compress this? So we say 50 is the value and zero is in which position? It is in position one. And how many times zero repeats here? Just one time. And uh, what about this? One, it is in position two. How many times one repeats there? It's four times. And then we have zero, which is in position six. And how many times it repeats? It just repeats one times. So we have actually compressed this particular data like this. Okay, now let us go and try for 100. How can we apply run length encoding here? this 100 and then we'll start this zero starts in position one and how many times it repeats five times and then one starts in position six and how many times it repeats just one times so what we have done is we have applied further compression on already compressed values first we have applied bitmap encoding and then we have applied run length encoding to further compress the data okay let us look at the next encoding technique the delta encoding technique so where is this delta encoding technique suitable it is suitable in a column wherein we have many distinct values and each value is different from the previous value by a delta so let's take this example for better understanding let's consider this particular column and you see here it has some large values and every value is different from the previous value by a delta. For instance, the difference between these two is one and the difference between these two is one. So we can have a difference like this value is different from this value by a delta. Here the delta is one and this value is different from this value by a one. So normally you see such uh, things when, when you go in for IDs, you have a large ID and each ID is different from another ID by a one. So you can also go and compress this kind of a data. You see there is, there are a lot of distinct numbers, but each number is different from the previous number by a certain factor. So how can you go and compress this? We just give the very first number, we store it like that. And later on, we just add the difference. We just store the difference. So this number is a delta. So it is just one greater than that number. So you give a plus one. Likewise, this number is one greater than the previous number. So plus one, plus one, plus one, and plus one. So if this number is one minus than the previous number, then we say that that is a minus one here. So what we do here is instead of repeating this large number, say a million times with just that uh, difference, we store the difference in our columns, thereby we save a lot of space. So again, compression is all about saving space. And once when you save space, compressed data, you can also work on the compressed data directly and achieve much faster aggregation or data analytical queries can work much faster on your columns. So this kind of an encoding is called delta encoding. 
So every subsequent value is a delta from the previous value. Okay, now let's take a look at the next form of encoding, the dictionary encoding. So what is dictionary encoding? Where it is applicable? It is applicable uh, in areas wherein large strings keep repeating in a table. We can substitute these large strings with integer values. So let me go and show you. In this particular table, we have scope, which is repeating, and we have SBST, which is repeating. So what we are doing here is we are creating another table, and we represent scope as 0, and we map SBST as 1, and we go ahead and change in this table. Wherever there is scope, we mention that as zeros, and wherever that is SBST, we mention that as 1s. And you see here, this particular column is actually a foreign key mapped to this table. School ID is the primary key in this column. So what we achieve here is we save a lot of space. We are compressing the data. Instead of repeating the largest strings, we use numerical integers. We use numerical values to represent larger strings. Likewise, you see here location SJT is repeating and SMV is repeating. We just go ahead and create another table with location and location ID. We say SJT, we represent that as 0 and SMV represent that as 1 and uh, we substitute these values in the actual table and this location id is nothing but a foreign key mapped to this particular table so again you see here we just represent larger values with numerical values thereby we conserve a lot of space we say this is a dictionary because we go and create dictionaries as we as shown here and these dictionaries contain the strings mapped to numerical values